Hello, Pokemon fans! I'm Jeff of the Game Capital and thegamecapital.com. Today we've got our booster case opening of the newest Pokemon set, Sun and Moon Unified Minds. Now, we've already done a single box opening, an Elite Trainer box opening, a pre release kit slash build and battle box opening. We've opened the newest theme decks, and now the grand finale of sorts is the booster case opening. I'm doing this one solo this time, uh, but we also will be doing a uh, 12 case opening recap video. I hope to have that up later tonight. Uh, this should be going live about noon Eastern, I think. And hopefully at some point tonight, I'll have the 12 booster case opening recap video live for you guys. Um, our staff has already opened 11 cases of this set. This is case number 12, and we'll make 12 cases in all. 72 booster boxes. Now, with this kind of mass, I'm not gonna do the pack trick, cause time, like, this. these are usually about an hour and a half as is. There's a hollow in the first pack for us, a frost last. So, try not to make them take too long. Cherish ball, solid pull, and a white code, cause obviously, we got a hollow. And, uh, I don't want to spoil too much, I kind of mentioned some stuff in, uh, I think the train box opening I did yesterday. But, uh, so far the pull rates, they, 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 they're looking good. They're looking good. Uh, the first booster box I did, and the first, uh, first few opens I did, pull rates are looking kind of skeptical. Seem kind of skeptical, but don't worry, things turned around by far. So, uh, I think you guys will enjoy the 12 case recap opening. You all usually do. And uh, everyone loves seeing those ratios to know what to expect uh, over the long haul as well. Of course, there will be variants from box to box, from case to case, etc, etc. But over the long haul, 12 cases hopefully being a long haul enough, we can paint a pretty decent picture of what the average should look like from box to box, from case to case, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, one spot I will say from the single box I did, which is not part of the 12 case recap because that was not from cases. Um, that box only had 11 white codes, and only four of them yielded ultra rare. So, that that is proven to not be the norm. Not be the norm. Uh, again, I don't want to say too much, because I want you guys to actually watch the recap video too, because I know a lot of you like it anyway. But, I, I'll, I'll say one thing. It appears that it is easier to pull an ultra rare than is to pull a regular hollow rare. How much easier? Well... Stay tuned for that recap, and uh, we'll, we'll find out that. So, hopefully you will all enjoy. And speaking of Ultra Rares, we have found our first one of our booster case. And it is a Heatran GX. With Burning Road for the ability, the attack is Steaming Stomp, and we got Hot Burn GX. Now, I'm probably not going to read what many of these cards do during this opening. Just because, like I said... It takes a while for me, by myself especially, to get through six booster boxes. So, I'll just try to hold them close enough and steady enough that you guys can read them. Uh, pause the video if you need to. And uh, I'll do my best to keep keep this train moving uh, as, as best we reasonably can here. So, hopefully you all don't mind. Hopefully you understand. I don't remember seeing that Heracross before. Turn the tables. Yeah, um, we actually have... Other staff members now that are officially organizers, uh, tournament organizers and judges, so I was actually able to participate in a couple of our pre-releases that I was not the organizer for, so that was a nice little change of pace for me. Um, one of them, I actually, ooh, there's a Serena Hollow. In the first one of two I did, I actually went undefeated 3-0. and uh, I pulled the Egglet Tag Team, Executor, and Rowlet, and uh, that proved pretty effective. Got some nice support pieces for it too. I got the uh, Meloetta. That has an attack that lets you attach an energy from your hand to a tag team. Uh, that's the attack of that, but this helps you accelerate and uh, helps you to ultimately do your GX move for Alolan Executor and Rowlet GX. And its GX tag team move is that all of your opponent's energy and play gets shuffled back into their deck. Uh, yeah, the first round I played the only junior in the event. Second round I won via deck out, which was... A nice little surprise. Uh, they had, I think it's the uh, Giratina Garchomp GX. That one's got a GX move that uh, they just discard one of my Pokemon from the bench, which was my tag team with like three, uh, three or four energy attached. 
So they got through their GX move before I could do mine. Uh, but since they end up decking out, they, uh, maybe they should have let me use my GX move to put some energy back in their deck. So they wouldn't deck out. But all worked out. Again, one by deck out. And the third round faced a Choo Choo, a Lolan Raichu and Raichu tag team GX. Uh, they got three energy onto it, but then I got my tag team with six energy on it. So I was able to get a knockout and return all of their energy to their deck, uh, leaving their board state without an answer to a nice beefy tag team. So went on to a nice 3-0 record there in that pre-release. And now we got another ultra rare. A Jirachi GX. That is one that you want to find. I'll read this one for you. Only 160 HP, but ability Psychic Zone. Don't apply we Psychic Weakness when Pokemon take damage from attacks. Both using your opponents. Star Search. Search your deck for an energy card attached to one of your Psychic Pokemon. Then shuffle your deck. And Star Shield GX. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. 100 damage. But the ability main thing there, so it's a nice little support piece if you're running things that have Psychic Weakness. Get that in a sleeve in just a moment here. But yeah, and then the second pre-release I did, well, the pre-release kit yielded four green codes for me, so that wasn't a good sign. So I didn't really get much uh, to really turn the tables, if you will, uh, from the packs. I went, I think it was one and two in that one. So, not a lot to say about it, just didn't pull a whole lot, but still had some fun. I uh, got to use, ooh, there's a Yuxi Hollow with Secret Territory. Uh, yeah, let's see, I had a Moongus in that deck and the Alola Marowak. So that's some fluffy Alola Marowak trying to do some fun, fun attacks, try to do some heavy damage for no energy, but couldn't do enough overall and just got the one win and two losses, but that is okay. And hey, there's the tag team I was talking about earlier in full art form, Rowlet and Alolan Executor. GX. So, Super Growth I didn't use because I didn't have any other Grass Pokemon to evolve anyway, but Calming Hurricane, 150 and heal 30 in pre-release where you got 270 HP and you're healing. That, that's tough to get over. And then Tropical Hour GX, 200 damage. And if you got 6 energy attached until 3 extra, then return all of your opponent's energy back into their deck. So, not too shabby for us, at least in pre-release play. We'll be surprised if the, some decks happen to come out of the woodwork and such uh, that prove relevant for that in standard play as well. Time will tell. But I would not call that a bad tag team by any means. We got two Lipard, one pack. And end of the first half of the box here. Yeah, I always say I want to have these case opens take me like an hour at most. And there's what I was talking about before with tag cheer attack. So that helped me as well. Namely in that third round matchup against the Choo Choo tag team. So that I could out energy excel them and get my GX move off before they could make their move. And here comes another ultra rare Umbreon and Darkrai GX tag team. Very nice, very nice. So halfway through the box, we've got seven white codes, four ultras, three hollows. I'll take it. Is that the... F Maybe that was... I don't know. It doesn't matter. We'll just keep on going here, shall we? Keep the good times rolling. And yeah, I can probably kind of skip the commons too, because at this point, between my single box opening and showing, you know, most of the cards too, you've probably seen all the commons. Most people just don't care too much about them, but once you see them once or twice, you know, it's enough. It's enough. I'll, I'll try to at least page two on this first box the rest of the way, uh, but then we can just start skipping to the reverse spot. And accelerate things. But yeah, let's try to say, I always want these to be like an hour. They usually end up being about 90 minutes, which is 15 minutes per box, which isn't terrible, but I mean, 10 minutes per box should be feasible. So, there's a hollow Electros. We'll see how it plays out, though. We'll see how it plays out. Oh, yeah. And again, trying to avoid spoilers, I'll try to mention it within the 12 case recap video. But I will mention that. It seems like some of the uncommons in this set uh, may have been uh, double allocated, double printed, double collated. What if you want to say? So I don't know if there was like, if you could see an uncut sheet of uncommons from this set, I think some of the uncommons would be on that sheet twice and others once. Because 
we, I think we got all of our trainers sorted out at least um, from the 11 cases. And some trainers are basically exactly double the quantity of other trainers. So it, it was a pretty interesting revelation. So I'll try to touch on that in the 12 case recap and show you the exact examples of which ones have the double printing and uh, what cards you you could argue are short printed at least compared to some other ones make sure I get that full stuff so you guys can pause and read if you need to that we found GX but yeah it's it's an interesting discovery we've noticed on past sets uh, I think when Cynthia first came out that was like a short printed card within the set but it wasn't like a two to one ratio it was more like uh, for every three you got of other trainers, you get two of Cynthia kind of thing. So, I mean, st still not a great ratio, but more than half of what other ones were. Again, make sure that one's close enough for you as well. That's what, six Ultra Rares so far, I think? We still got a pretty decent wad of packs there. We are doing A-OK -okay here for our first box, but no high level pulls just yet. No Mew 3 of any rarity. No, no side up either. Um, no rainbows, no secrets, but there's still time, and there's five more boxes beyond that as well, so we'll find some good stuff, don't you worry. I usually I do these case openings, multi-case openings, you never get a secret rare in every box. Uh, usually it seems like you get maybe five secret rares per case, sometimes it's like four and a half, so usually at least one box in each case will not have a secret rare. Secret rares are, you know, the gold cards and the rainbow rares. They're all secret rares. Um, if you're opening Japanese proc, then I believe the full arts still are also um, secret rares, but not in America. Not in English. So, yeah. Hone Edge and Kangas, Kangas, Kangas Khan with a double draw, hollow rare. Cheris Ball. It's our second Cheris Ball of the box. I think in our first box, I mean, there are some trainers we did not pull. Because they're. It's, again, the biggest set of all time, again. And there's just a ton of trainers in this set. I think there's like about two dozen trainers. Reset stamp, another good one. I think it's around two dozen trainers. If that includes the uh, two, sec or not secret, just the two special. That's what we're looking for. Two special energies. Because they kind of go in the same category. They're uncommons that aren't Pokemon. Oh, there's two trainers and an energy. Blaine's Quiz Show. I remember getting that in our box opening or ETB or... That might be the first Blaine's Quiz Show that I have personally opened. It could be. It could be. Alright, getting down there. Oop, oop. More shine. More shine. What we got now? What we got now? Slowpoke and Psyduck GX. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. For those that don't know yet, Psyduck is my favorite Pokemon of all time. So, I, I will be collecting all of these Slowpoke and Psyduck versions. Because uh, there's an ultra rare card that has a Psyduck on it. I mean, I, I, I have to collect them. Have to collect them. We've got a pretty nice head start from the 11 cases we've opened and counting. And I will have a little spoiler from the single box open previously in the channel because a lot of you probably saw it already anyway. We did get the regular full art uh, Psyduck, Slowduck in that. Uh, box. So, my collection is off to a good start from the cases we opened so far, and I'm sure I'll acquire more and more over time as well. Tynamo Reverse, Haunch Crow, and last pack of box number one. What we got? Anything good? So this is going to be a secretless first box. Reverse Pokemon Research Lab, and a Tapu Fina. Fina! <laughs> Alright, box one. Done. That almost domed me. Didn't go over the chair though. So box one. We got five hollows. And we got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ultra rares. So seven ultras, six hollows. No, five hollows. So still 12 I codes. We only got one full art and six regular arts. Wow. That's, that's an interesting first box. So, we got some nice high-end stuff coming very soon here, I think. So let's just keep on rock and rolling here. All right, we're cracking into box two with under 15 minutes into the video. It's a good sign. Also, I'm not sure how much 
storage this camera will hold. My phone. I deleted some extra stuff before recording, so... Actually, we'll, we'll keep them in there. That seemed to work okay. But yeah, we can completely skip the commons now. And uh, hopefully that'll work out okay for us. Alright, back it up a little bit. And let's keep going here, shall we? I think after every two boxes, I'll clear the packs from the left-hand side of the set here. Glissapod. Should probably clear the uh, commons right away. Why did I throw that box? Come back, box! I need you. I need you. Because, yeah, the common stack, there's a box and a pack worth of commons. So let me stash those away right away, because uh, that will get unruly quickly otherwise. All right. We good. We good. Let's keep it rolling. Let's see. What else can we talk about? I'll, I'll mention, although it won't really matter for you guys at this point, but uh, if you're watching this shortly after it's upload, I'm currently the organizer for a League Cup that's happening right now. Uh, it started at noon Central Standard Time, Sunday, July 28th. Uh, not sure if people will, will be getting, but maybe I can try to get some footage and like throw together a video of it or something. I don't know if you guys would like to see anything like that or not, but we don't really know what to expect for people. Our first two League Cups we had, we had 30 and 36 players, but this is a first League Cup of a new season, so... We won't be surprised if we get like 60. So, I don't really know what to even like put like the over under at, but I don't know. I, I'll say we get mid 40s. I'll be, I'll be optimistic, but aim low from what some others are saying could happen. But oh, and if we if we get you know too many players, it'll be a good problem to have. We'll make it work one way or another. Round up some extra tables, extra chairs. We can play at the display cases. Worst case scenario. We'll, we'll make it work for people. Don't you worry. But, uh, yeah, definitely definitely could be interesting. Definitely could be interesting. So, that's going on right now. And we'll have our last chance pre-leases as well at the conclusion of Swiss Rounds. So, as some space frees up and players are quote-unquote eliminated from the League Cup, uh, we can fire off some pre-releases while supplies last as well. So, depending when you've seen this, you know, you could possibly, if you're in the area-ish, still enjoy us for pre-release and or just stop in and see how chaotic things may be during a League Cup. Uh, we have to rearrange the store a little bit to fit some extra, extra tables or something, but, uh, yeah. Hollow Evil Tall. Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah. We will see what happens with that. And we, of course, have League Challenges every month as well. We always have our League Challenges on a Thursday during our typical League session. Um, usually it ends up being about the third Thursday. Uh, this month was kind of wonky because, uh, well, we didn't want to do it last, this most recent Thursday in the past because that fell within pre-releases. We want to have a League Challenge essentially replace our pre-releases. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, we just try to be like the third or fourth Thursday, mainly so we have more time. We allow Pokemon more time to get us the promos and stuff in time, because sometimes it happens where you run the League Challenge and the promos have not yet arrived, and then you have to keep track of who got the top four in each division and then try to track them down in the future uh, once we actually have them in hand. And here we go, our first full art trainer of the case is Blue's Tactics. Very nice looking card right there. Uh, the main full art trainer you want to pull in this set seems to be the Misty. Seems to be the Misty. Uh, other than that, there's not any like chase uh, full arts uh, for the trainers, but they're all still very cool to pull whenever you do. So, not going to complain about any of the full art trainers we get. As far as secret rare trainers, though. You want to get Cherish Ball, you want to get Reset Stamp, you want to get Viridian Forest Golden Boy. There's another full art back to back packs Guard Shop and Giratina GX. Linear Attack, Calamitous. I don't know how to say that. Calamitous? Slash? Maybe? I don't know. But yeah, those are the three secret rare trainers you really want to pull. And uh, there's another trainer that's kind of meh. That's secret rare that uh, we've pulled a lot of them. And not, not a ton of, of the best ones, but you can see those full details again in the 12-case opening recap video that I hope to have live later today. Worst case, should be live tomorrow. 
so it's coming. It's coming. It's obviously say it's not recorded yet because I'm not done with the 12 cases because I, I got these here before you. But uh, yeah, I haven't really been skipping the commons yet, have I? Oh well. Oh well. Cherish ball. Cherish you. Hoo -hoo 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 -hoo. I shouldn't sing, should I? Nah, probably not. Hooper Reverse and Naganadel GX. In the pre-release that I went 3-0 oh, in, I got the full art Naganadel, but didn't pull any Poiples, so was not an option for me to play in that pre-release, but Eglet did it enough by itself. I, I didn't need a second GX. I actually had two Cherish Balls in that deck, too, so like a lot of times in pre-release when you pull a tag team, people will play the tag team plus 39 energy, but I figured like with two Cherish Balls, uh, an attacker that can accelerate the energy attachments. I felt I felt safe adding other Pokemon having, you know, a more legitimate normalized deck, if you will. And it obviously worked out with that 3 and 0 record. Rare Reverse Salazzle and a Galvantula. Channeler, that's another one you can get as a full art. So halfway through this box, we're at four ultras and two hollows. Like I said, it's easier to pull Ultra Rares than it is Hollow Rares in this set. There's a Hollow Haxorus. We went seven Ultras, five Hollows in box one, and we're at four Ultras and three Hollows so far here in box number two. Cherish Ball Reverse, noise. Now this case, this box acts like the pre-release kits and the ETB opened. We might see a re reset stamp reverse, and a Recycle Energy Reverse very soon as well. I got all three of those reverses in that first pre-release in four packs, and they're possibly like the three best reverses you can get. And then the ETB earlier that I opened, it was uploaded yesterday, as I recorded today though. Um, and that one I think I got all three of those reverses as well, so it seems like those three reverses like to show up close by, close together. Uh, we'll see. Reverse Slumbering Forest, cool, cool, cool. An Aerodactyl GX. There's a regular Recycle Energy. Not sure I held these close enough, so I'll just hold these both up there in case you missed the Gadel. Pause and read at your leisure. But we'll continue right along here. Five Ultras, three Hollows so far in this second box. Galvantula Reverse. Livani. Livani's like. The voice is just. It's interesting. Like, I feel like it doesn't often say the full name, it just says Levan, and then just kind of tails off, you know? The Levan! I guess it says, still says the full name, but like... When Levani's saying its name, at least in the anime from the episode that I saw Levani in, you know, years ago at this point, we get another tag team, the regular art Giratina, Garchomp and Giratina. Um, yeah, definitely emphasizes the first part of its name, and then just kind of tails off, you know? Gets tired out after saying the first syllable or so of its name. Levani. So yeah, it's like, Levani's just excited to say its name, and then it's like, yeah, I, I'm done now. I'm done. Slack Authorverse. Victini Hollow. Not a new flip teeny though. And a and, and not near mint code card. Oh no. Oh no. All right. I'm gonna be like so thirsty and just dry in the mouth by the time this video's over. Oh well. I'm a trooper. I'm a fighter. We'll get through this. Not like this is torture by any means. Actually, did not get to open any packs from the 11 cases that we've opened so far for the store. So, <laughs> I thought I was going to, but just other circumstances prevent me from ultimately helping with that opening. But it all got done in one workday. So, it's all good. It's all good. I just did not yet get to open myself uh, the highest rarities of slow duck, unfortunately, unfortunately. So, would love to pull the rainbow rare and or the alternate full art of that card myself. We'll see what happens though, we'll see what happens. If we get one of them in this case, hopefully, maybe, we shall see, we shall see. So he's got the regular art so far. Wimpod reverse, and I'm starting to feel like I lied about those reverses, I, I'm not seeing that uh, reset stamp or that uh, recycle energy. A few packs left, but they're not exactly close to where the uh, cherish ball is pulled at this point. So, you know, 
Yeah, I know. Oh well. Ba -da -ba -da -bum. I feel like we're in a lull here. How many green codes in a row is that? How many green codes in a row is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green codes in a row. Where's the hotness? We still don't have a seeker rare. We still don't have a seeker rare in this case, and we're in the second box. Where are the seeker rares? That's eight straight green codes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Can we end on two white codes here? Can we get a seeker rare up in her? Can we do it? Can we do it? Nine straight green codes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Last pack, last chance for glory here. Box number two. Does it have a secret rare? Otherwise, we're gonna have some boxes that have two secret rares here. We have to. Well, it's an ultra rare. The green code streak ends, but just a regular art. Just a regular art egglet. Huh. Huh. So we do not yet have any secret rares. Okay. Well, let me get this uncommon stack out of the way, because that's gotten a little bit unruly here. Uno momento. Por favor. Por favor. So those are the uncommons. I'll stick to my right on the floor, I guess. For now. And the commons. We got this many more. Sorry for the bumpity bump bump there. My apologies. Alright, so commons. That box full enough. Straighten out my piles here a little bit. Do some stack maintenance of the reverses and of the rares and the energy and the codes. All right, so how'd that box end up? We got four hollow rares and ultra rares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that one was an 11 white code box. Include a streak of nine straight green codes and we're a streak of 72 packs of this case with no secret rares. Huh. I'm trying to think. Did I have any secret rares in our single box opening we did either? I don't think we did. I don't think I have pulled a secret rare from this set yet. And I opened three boxes. That's 108. I opened an ETB. That's 116. And I opened four kits. That's 16 more packs. I think I've opened 132 packs of Unified Minds myself so far. I don't think I have pulled a secret rare. That's kind of bizarre. That is kind of bizarre. And let me get some of the booster packs from the side here cleaned off. Or uh, They're going to run out of room for them real quick here. Real quick here. I actually have a garbage right next to me. I'm a little bit prepared. A little bit prepared. All right, box three. And FYI, I'm opening the same order that in the case. So the first box of them was like the front box where this face is the front. So... I don't know if box location matters in the case, but in case anyone's curious about all those kind of details, I'm opening these in that order. So next box will be that one in the middle and the bottom left. That's how we gonna be rolling. Reverse Litwick and a Ladias Rare. Reset stamp. Come on, Seeker Rare. So that's 132. 133 pack, 134. Now, I had a similar streak in um, Team Up, where I did not pull any full art dudes for like hundreds of packs. Didn't pull Brock Grit, didn't pull Ingo and Emmett, Nanu, maybe even one other one. Didn't pull any of the full art dudes for like two, three plus hundred packs. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. All right, so that's uh, 135. Pack 136. I want to know how many packs takes me to get a secret rare. It's got to be coming. It's got to be soon. It has to be, right? Has to be. Doesn't it? 137. I'm sorry if the numbers get annoying, but I'm very curious. We got to beat this streak. We got to stop this streak. Got to halt it. Got to halt it. Stone Cold. Stone Cold still out of nowhere. Let's get that secret rare. 138. Boom. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh my goodness. 
139? What's our lucky number? Can you have a lucky number that's triple digits? Like most people's, oh, there we go, 139. Okay, full spoiler alert. That's the card we pulled a ton of in our first 11 cases. This is like the only secret rare trainer that exists in this set, it seems like. It took me 139 packs to get our first secret rare that I have personally opened. And it's the rare secret rare that I think they said they've gotten like seven or eight of from the 11 cases they opened. So, not the secret we want to pull, but it's the secret rare. So 139 packs it took us, I think, to pull my first secret rare of the set. Wow. Hopefully I never beat that record for any other set. Or just any period of time in general. Full Art Latios GX in the very next pack. Nice, nice. Yeah, it seems like for these boxes, you a lot of times get those chunks where you just get green codes for a while, like nine packs, and then other times you get like two or three ultras in a row. So uh, we'll definitely do our best to shuffle our packs every time we open a fresh box for the store, uh, just to to try to help with uh, the randomness, I guess. I don't know if there's like a set pattern or anything to these. There often seems to be. A lot of times it seems like the commons will appear in the same order, the uncommons will be in the same order, so. The correlation and stuff can be weird at times, so. Generally for all card games, we do our best to try to shuffle the boxes before we put them in our chute and stuff, because sometimes there's patterns and we want to not have those be things. Dragonite GX with Dragon Claw and Sky Judgment and Mock Delivery. Delivery. Oh, can't talk. Can't talk. Mock Delivery GX. And I don't know if I showed that one close enough. So there's the Latios GX and what it all does. So, three ultras and one hollow so far in this box. So yeah, like I said, easier to pull ultra rares than it is hollow rares. I don't think there's any like, quote unquote, busted hollows in this set. Uh, like, you know, Jirachi and Zapdos and such in team up. Uh, definitely high end hollows. Lost Thunder has several um, above average hollows anyway. But, like these sets are so big now. I'm not sure offhand how many Hollow Rares are in this set, but like Lost Thunder, Team Up, and Broken Bonds, they have like 18 to 21 Hollows, I think. And if you average six Hollows per box, you know, generally for G the Sun and Moon sets, you get 12 White Codes in a box, and usually it's six Hollows and six Ultras. So if there's 18 Hollows in a set, that means it takes three boxes to get one of each, not factoring for reverses. So, and there's a Magnet Zone. So, if you want a play set of a hollow and you don't like reverses, four times three, that's 12 boxes. That's two cases to get a single play set of a hollow rare. So if you, uh, if you haven't yet wrapped your head around like how, how a uh, hollow rare like Jirachi can get expensive as it has, it's been as high. And it's been like 18 plus since it came out pretty much. But it's been as high as like 30 to 35, I think, at times. It's because it's played in a lot of decks, and it's because you don't get them that frequently. The one thing to help track your strategy down, though, is that it is a promo for pre release in the build and battle boxes. So a lot of people, including us, kind of mass open those as a Hollow Soul Valley. So that helped get more Drachis in the market, but honestly, the price is still up there. Same with Zapdos, not as up there, but. Still definitely above average for a hollow rare, even though it is easier to obtain because there is a promo version in the Bill and Battle boxes that a lot of people opened a lot of. So it's interesting. And then Lost Thunder, uh, Shaman's been like six to eight dollars. Giratina, I think, is getting up around there at times. Um, some other ones. I mean, if a hollow gets really good at a lot of decks, be prepared to pay at least five dollars for it because. And if you get one of it for three bucks on average, I mean, there, there's going to be a premium. Espeon and Deoxys GX with Psychic Club and Cross Division GX. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I think that's the first one of that one I've pulled. I'm going to be getting close to pulling all the Ultra Rares already now. I haven't gotten Mew 3 in this case yet, though. I pulled it in our first... Not in our first box. We pulled it in the uh, Build and Battle box opening I did for you guys. Spoiler alert. Sorry. 
But generally, I just kind of assume you have seen the past videos. I know there's always new viewers with each video too, so. If this is your first video you ever watched of mine, welcome, welcome. I always try to do a case of bringing up each and every set. Uh, and hey, you speak of them, and then they show up. That, that's how openings work. If you talk about a card, it shows up sooner rather than later, it seems. Mewtwo and Mew GX with that perfection ability. That is going to basically be like the new meta. Expect to see this in a lot of decks as soon as it is officially tournament legal. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Going to be in a lot of decks. For sure. For sure. Alright, a Rockwinid. These piles are not staying nice. Oh my goodness. Um, the rare. It doesn't help that like all different heights, so they kind of start to overlap each other too, but. Oh well, we'll make do. We'll make do. Let's just keep plugging away here, shall we? Shall we? Second secret rare of the box Heatran GX. Not one of the more desired GX of the set. And, uh,. If I heard correctly, I think this is also one of the rainbow rares we got the most of. So, while I, I rarely think there's actually like short prints or over prints in the ultra rares in Pokemon, maybe for this set there is. Heatran GX and Tag Switch. In our 12 case experience, as you will see in our 12 case recap video, they seem to be printed more than the other ones. I mean, it's quite possible someone else could open 12 cases and pull one of each of those and seven Cherish Balls or something crazy, but in our 12 case experience, those cards are printed more than others of the same rarity. Hello, Tapu Coco. But hey, like I said, with no secret as the first two boxes, we're gonna have to get at least one box that has multiple secret rares. Unfortunately, there are two secret rares we've already gotten a ton of, but oh well. It's still a two secret box. That's still pretty cool. So I'll I'll quit moaning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Karate belt reverse and leave any. Giant Hearth is probably the most desired stadium of this set. There's three or four stadiums in this set actually. Um, the one that I don't like seeing the most, due to past experience, is Slumbering Forest. For that one, if Pokemon's asleep, they need to flip two coins and get two heads to wake up. Gives me bad memories because I think it was top four, not top eight. It was definitely top cut. I want to say top four. Of uh, regionals in St. Louis in probably like 2007, 2008-ish, somewhere in there. I, I think I was playing Mew Trick. And in that top four, probably my best turn finish of all time. <laughs> I don't know how many people were in regionals back then. I can't remember. My memory's not that great. Tracking hell. But, um, yeah. I, th I think it was in top four. I was facing Chris Fulop, who I'm sure is a name that many competitive players know at least. Uh, one of the world, he was, was he second, I think, at one of the first worlds in like 2004 or 5? Whatever year they had the first worlds decks, I think. I think he had the uh, Blaziken Firestarter one. So there's a worlds deck um, from him from worlds one year. So, he's, he's definitely one of the higher end players. I don't know if he's still playing much these days though. But anyways, phase of Chris full up. I got off to a good start, down at board state. I was taking knockouts, whatever. And then he played a mischievous. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I had to read the card cause like mischievous, what does mischievous do? Mistress had an ability. The same ability that Slumbering Forest Stadium card has. If a Pokemon's asleep, you gotta flip two coins, you gotta get two heads to wake up. And of course, before that tournament started, like the last chain of end of the deck was, I believe that I took out my warp points, which was basically a escape rope back then. So, the chance, oh, another slow poke inside I could GX. Very nice, very nice. So the, the only way really I had to wake up was to flip two heads and um, I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. So, he basically put me into a coma and by the time I finally woke up or he decided to knock me out or whatever, his board state was fully caught up and he 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 was swaying for the fences, so. And another Jex to end the box. Not bad. So yeah. 
The, the card that eliminated me from my best tournament and a chance to actually win a regional potentially, or at least get top two, was Mischievous, where I had to flip two heads from sleep to wake up. So, seeing that now exist in a trainer card, in a stadium card, gives me nightmares. Gives me nightmares, to say the least. So, I, I may have to build a deck for funsies on PCG or something at least, and or IRL that utilizes that. Uh, just to, you know, aggravate my opponents, to let them experience what I was experienced. But, yeah, that, that's my little side story on that. As I uh, wrap that up and uh, get some of these stacks put away here. That's the uncommon box, alright. Uncommons, uncommons. And I don't know, I guess I'm about to put them, I, I need to put all these stacks away now. Um... Let's see, I'll throw that to the floor, and we'll go reverses, and then we'll turn it, and we'll put rares, and then we'll turn it. I know this part's very exciting for you all. I guess in theory I could pause the video and then keep going, but then there's like, people, it's like, oh, you got cool pulls, but there was a, there was a cut, so you probably did something wonkier. Who knows? But anyways, we got five hollows, and ultra rares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ultra rares, including two seeker rares and a full art as well. And a slow duck. Don't don't sleep on that slow duck. Don't you do it. Alright. Box number four. So halfway through, I'm at 41 minutes, so I'm pace for 122. So better than an hour and a half. Better than an hour and a half. You know, if I do a semi-appropriate quick little case recap at the end. Should be under our typical hour and a half. I'm not going to be at an hour because 19 minutes for the rest here is not going to happen. Let me try doing this one with uh, the packs out. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, let's, let's just keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Musharna Reverse and a Salazzle. I think I could go quicker if I could be like above my camera. Because my cell phone is like, if I lean forward, my, my nose would touch the screen. I can't see over it. So I'm like, I'm sorry if the sound is weird to like to see where my piles are. I have to like keep going to the left of the camera and then to the right of the camera. So yeah, I'm sorry if the audio jumps around. If it does, let me know because I don't know if that causes issues or not for sure. So yeah, if you notice the audio jumps from like headphone to headphone or whatever, hello then right you how? Uh, let me know and I'll try my best to uh, do something about that moving forward, I guess, but it's tricky. I mean, I don't have to really sort as I open these, but it makes sorting in the end a lot easier, so I like to do that. And then we got a full art Mega Sable Eye and Tyranitar GX. In this case, we don't have any alternate full arts yet, I don't think. I don't think. We got one in our Elite Trainer box, though. Got one in the Elite Trainer box. Guess I'll put the Ultra Rare a little further over because the packs are kind of in the way. Mobby. Mobby. Ax you. Whimsy, whimsy, whimsy cut. Whimsical, whimsy cut. Whew. These lights get hot after a while, I tell you. Dragonite. Speaking of Dragonite, if you didn't see, also have a video opening the two new theme decks. The Necrozza one in particular has some very nice value in it. So check that out if you're curious. Definitely do so. Definitely do so. And I will try to get some uh, matches in with those theme decks on PTGO via live stream on twitch.tv slash the game capital in the very near future. I always forget if uh, the new stuff goes live on there on Monday or on the Friday release date. So whenever it is, I'll try to try to keep an eye on it and I'll try to get a live stream in or two and actually get some games with those and uh, see how they fare. See if either one is... Uh, Seems as good as the Mewtwo theme deck from Unbroken Bonds. Because that one, I feel like that's the best theme deck in format, and I feel like it still is. But it'll be easier to say, um, be easier to say, what was I saying? I don't know. I lost the train of thought. My bad. <laughs> Full disclosure, I saw a message pop up on my phone, uh, Messenger, and I tried to read it, and then I, I can't read and copyright on a reading, and then follow a conversation I'm having, I guess. I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Two crustal, one pack. Oh my goodness. When was the last time we had a crustal in the set? I feel like it. We don't get a lot of crustals. I don't know how long it's been. I don't know if it's been a long time or not, but I don't know. If you know, comment below and tell me. Crustal pre last appeared in blank set, and let me know what that blank set is. That, 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 that's your trivia for the day, I guess. What set did Crustal last appear in? And if you know, please comment below and say, Crustal last appeared in blank. So, I think I had a reverse Selby. It's like, did I already sell, didn't I already have a Selby in this box? I think it was reverse. I think it was reverse. I don't think I missed, missed a white code, hollow, whatever. Ooh, 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 what we got? Evil Tower reverse. And Poke Maniac Full Art. Not bad, not bad. It, it's definitely a, a unique and cool collector card there. Yeah, what does Pokemon do? I don't even remember. I should read it. I should read this one. Search your deck from the three Pokemon that have a retreat cost of exactly four. Reveal them and put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. So if you're playing Pokemon that have retreat cost four, it, it's good. So it's a very situational card that will go in very situational decks. But in the right deck, it can be very good. But overall, below average. Reverse Giant Hurt there is above average as far as reverses go, though. That much I can say. Whew. Reverse Toxapex and a Hollow Hoopa. You're going to get like one and a half of each Hollow Rare from this booster of case, I think. <laughs> They are hard to pull. Weakness God. All right, on to the second half of this box. I think the first half only took like four or five minutes, so might be down to like a 10 minute per box pace now. There we got the Choo Choo GX Tandem Shock Lightning Ride GX. This is also a solid, solid tag team. If you don't know what it does, please pause and read that at your leisure. Last I checked, I, I think this is the second highest priced tag team of the set behind Mew3 right now. Last I checked, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, I could be mistaken. Because between, you know, full arts, secret careers, alternate arts, the same ones people multiple times, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I missed one, I don't know. It's possible, it's possible. Laurentis, Fomantis, and uh, Latios GX regular art with that power bind. Power bind. Sleeve you up. And keep on rolling. Yeah, and my, I've mentioned live streams. My apologies. I have not had a chance to live stream for weeks now. Well, I live streamed last week Sunday with some Mario Kart. Because I got a capture card now where I can stream switch. Uh, and Time Open always does Community Night for Mario Kart. That I'm always a part of. And now I can actually be part of it while streaming myself as well. So, that's cool. So, um, that might be happening tonight. I might miss it. It depends how late uh, League Cup goes. I might be able to join, but not at the start of it or something. We'll see. But, if you're online around 7, 8... Between 7 and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's when it's usually going. Uh, at least for the back end of that, I might be live streaming some Mario Kart as well. And when there's space in the room, anybody watching is always welcome to join us as well and race alongside us. So if you want to race against me in Mario Kart, I'm not one of the best ones in there, but I I I've been doing better. I've been doing better. Hello, Garchomp. Uh, you, you can definitely join us and uh, check it out. So... There'll probably be some multi-stream action going on, so we'll try to drop those multi-stream links in the chat every so often. And, uh, yeah. I'll have to add a command to mine so you can get my uh, switch code as well. So you can add me as a friend. Otherwise, you can go to time of one stream, and I think it's just exclamation point switch, I think. Or possibly friend code, or possibly either. Um, get his friend code, and you can still join the same room as me then, because... Basically, the only time Mario Kart is during his community nights, so I get about two hours of Mario Kart in each week, most weeks. I think the only Mario Kart I've played off stream so far, uh, outside of his community nights, is on a plane on our way to vacation in March. 
I completed all the cups in 50 CC. Oh yeah, I should mention too, for the community nights, we, we t pretty much always do 200 CC, so full disclosure, full warning there. If you race with us, it's at 200 CC. The only, there's been one exception so far. Only one exception so far, so just come in expecting 200 CC. But yeah. So maybe I can uh, live stream some uh, Pokemon games too. Maybe I'll do some live streaming of Sword and Shield, Shield and Sword, whatever you want to call it when it comes out. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah. I, I can't say much yet, but uh, we're working on some pretty big things uh, behind the scenes right now, which will help contribute to uh, less videos and less live stream regularity in the shorter term over the next few months. But if all goes well, uh, in a few months we might have a lot more videos and live streams. This might feature more than just myself. So, might be good news-ish to some, might be bad news to some if you only care about me. I, I'm not going to see anything like that, but... Naturally, some people that watch will, will prefer videos by me if they're watching me already, so... But, we'll hopefully be able to pump out more content one way or another in the near-ish future. Full out Aerodactyl. Near-ish future being like three months from now, best case scenario, I'd say. So, maybe by the time Cosmic Encounters comes out, maybe, best case scenario, we'll uh, be in a situation where uh, we can do more and more content for you guys. We being more than just yours truly. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Once anything semi-definitive happens, I'll definitely give you guys the heads up and uh, make some announcements. But in the meantime, just have to wait and see. Just have to wait and see. Get these commons out of the way oh, again. So many commons. So many commons. I think you probably get the uncommons out of the way right away too. And then other than commons and uncommons, well, I still got two boxes left. I don't know. I don't know. Stuff those. Oop. Will those fit? Eh, yes and no. I'll just put a few in the front. That'll do. A few more. Still a little little wonky there. Still a little wonky there. Alright. Good enough. Quick little stack maintenance. Do 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 do. Alright. That box we got five hollows. I think we've gotten five at most five hollow rares in each box so far. Ultra rares we got a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six. So it's another box with only eleven white coats and no secret rares. So, uh, this case is giving me reminders of Plasma Blast Flash from the past. Uh, that case opening that I think I did, well, I think that case opening was single boxes over the course of time. Like, I, I record them all at the same time, but they reached their own box openings. I've even been like box one, part one, box one, part two, and then box two, box three, box four, box five, box six. But, uh, um, uh, these packs too. Um, spoiler alert from that video from years ago. If I remember right, I think we got four full arts and like seven regular EXs. So I got like 11 ultra rares from six boxes or something gross like that. Luckily though, the, um, oh, and two secret rares as well, which are both the same, both Dusk Noir from Beret. Um, so yeah, the quantity was very bad, but the quality was good. I think we had like, we were heavy on Genesect GX and Verizian GX, which were the ones we wanted to pull back then. So, that much was good. That much was good. But yeah. Um. So, so yeah, in that case, I believe four boxes had only regular arts, and two boxes had two full arts each. So, only one in three boxes had a Seeker Rare. But when they did, they had two. And so far in this case, we've opened four boxes. We've only gotten two secret rares, both of them the same box. So we've gotten two secret rares in four boxes. Three of our four boxes have had no secret rares. So I'm hoping one of these two boxes has two secret rares again and the other has one. So they ended with five secret rares. That's my hope at this point. And I'm hoping that we can get either a Cherish Ball 
or a Varian Forest, or a Reset Stamp for Secret Rare, or of course, you know, the Secret Rare Mew 3 would be good too. It's a Hollow Giratina to start off this box. Hollow Giratina. Now I'm sitting at 55 minutes. We're across an hour within this box. And another egglet. Another egglet. I'll have to open another pack of sleeves here pretty soon. Pretty soon. Whew. Oh yeah, something else I want to mention in this video, I guess. Um, tomorrow, I think. It's hard to speak about the future when I haven't even recorded the video to about for the future yet. Because I might not have the time to actually make it happen. Might be delayed by a day or so, but um, hopefully... Hopefully you're seeing this video, if you see the date upload. Hopefully this video is upload on Sunday. And then hopefully tomorrow, Monday, in the morning, I will have a booster box opening of a brand new trading card game. Brand new trading card game. Argent Saga. Hey, Secret Rare. Naganadel. We got there. We got there. So, uh, Argent Saga is created by the card company, the card shop company. The local game store, ARG. There's Nagato. And they have created their own card game. We actually ran a pre-release for it in our store this past Friday. So, well, it was yesterday based on recording this, but two days ago based on when this is uploaded, I guess. That's always so confusing. Um, and myself, my staff, everyone that tries it seems to really enjoy the game. So, I've got high hopes and high expectations for the game. I think it's going to take off and going to be a nice new category for us. I'm hoping to get some like new card players into things. It doesn't just like take players from other card games or communities we have established right now, but we'll see how it goes. And if it does, hopefully, you know, it's just a second game for people and doesn't like replace. Cause I don't want like all of our Pokemon players to stop playing Pokemon to play Urgent Saga. I want all of our card fight players to stop playing card fight and just play Urgent Saga instead. If they want to play both, I'm obviously cool with that. But I mainly want to attract, would prefer to attract um, players for it that aren't already playing card games. But maybe just because of how many cards certain card games have or how expensive it is to get into card games, they just choose not to. Um, but being a brand new card game with, you know, one set out and five intro decks right now, it's a much more approachable game. And while I, I feel like the uh, skill ceiling in the game is very high, it's also a very easy to learn approachable game. It's got a lot of elements from past games. Like it kind of took a lot, of, a lot of the best elements from other card games and spun all together to make a new unique game of its own. Um, within that game, you win by destroying your opponent's five towers and then attacking them directly is how you win or by making them deck out as typical with most card games. Um, so with that aspect, it's similar to Kaijudo, which had shields. Uh, the difference is, for this one, the towers are their own deck. Whereas in Kaiju, I think you just shuffle your deck and then, like Pokemon has prizes, the shields connected as prizes. Except when your shield was destroyed, it went to your hand. Whereas in Pokemon, when you knock out a Pokemon, you draw a card. So, you got hand advantage when you were, when you were attacked, as opposed to doing the attacking. So it kind of helps reduce the chance of, like, one person running away at the game. So if one person did too much too early, the other player would get some hand advantage to try to make a more easy, more feasible comeback. So, so that's how you win in Arjun Saga. Um, they have a shard deck, which is basically the energy, the mana, however you want to refer to it as compared to other card games. And every turn, you get a shard from the shard deck into play. So, if it was Pokemon, it'd be like you get an energy card every turn. You're not going to miss an energy drop. If it's magic, you have a land automatically every turn. You're not going to get mana screwed, as people call it. So, that's very nice. So, it, it helps helps balance things that way, too. Uh, you have a champion and a spirit for that game. I, I keep wanting to call the champion, like, your commander or, like, a planeswalker um, in magic. But you can't target the champion. The champion just chills out there. And the champion has a unique ability uh, that does different things man, which the champion is so it's kind of like a planeswalker that has his own abilities but it can't be destroyed or attacked or targeted or anything like that and the spirit also 
has zone ability. And the spirit is what lets you play multicolor. So, Arden Saga has five different colors. Um, I refer to what the colors actually look like. So, purple, not black. Yellow, not white. Uh, and then green, blue, and red. Weavile GX. Um, so that's why I refer to them as. Uh, and the spirit has... I keep forgetting the, the, like, the official term for it. But there's a number in the top left corner of the spirit. And that number is how many of the color the spirit is you can play in your deck. And so far, all the spirits have a, the same number of eight. So a deck for Arjun Saga is between 40 and 60 cards. Um, and all the cards have to be the same color as your champion, except for whatever your spirit color is, you can play, you know, if you have a red, a red champion and a blue spirit, you can play 32 to 52 red cards and eight blue cards. There are also cards that are like neutral colored that wouldn't factor into the limitation of the eight. So if you want to count that zone color, there's three colors, but not, not really. So basically, you play two color decks plus neutral colors. Like colorless Pokemon can splash into any deck. They don't have specific energy requirements. That kind of thing. So, yeah. It's a very interesting game. I'm enjoying it. I was undefeated 4-0. Uh, one of our staff members dealt me my first loss uh, just a couple hours before I recorded this video. So I'm now sitting at 4-1 lifetime. So I've got a ton of games in yet, but I'm definitely enjoying what what I've experienced so far. And that's using just the basic decks without any deck construction and customization yet. So a lot more for me still to personally discover with the game as well as I start getting some proc opened and making some, you know, custom decks and such as well. So I'll see how that all plays out. And I'm very antsy to get a box open, but I gotta get all this Pokemon open first, which I enjoy too, don't get me wrong. But I'm just, just antsy to open my first box of Arjun Saga as well. So that will be hoping, hopefully I'll have that opened before Monday morning so I can have it uploaded ready to go for Monday. I hope to have it live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. That's my hope. Hey, there's our first alternate art GX of the box. Choo Choo GX. That's a good one to get. That might be the best alt you can get because the alternate art Mew and Mewtwo GX, the Mew 3, that is not in the set. That is going to be in a tin in about a month. I think September 3rd is the release date. I believe September 3rd is the release date. Get some more sleeves out here. Actually, I should probably use the same brand that the other ones are. Or they probably might be slightly different size or something. And that would just be not ideal, but we'll see. We'll see. That's probably enough, honestly. All right. So, okay, I'll show you here. This is what I will be opening ASAP. Arjun Saga Betrayal Booster Box. There are 24 packs in a booster box. 10 cards per pack. And uh, 10 cards are randomly inserted into each pack from a pool of 121. Yada, yada, yada. Blah, 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 blah. And there's a set breakdown. 60 commons. There's also foil versions of the commons. 25 rares, 18 super rares, 13 Arjun rares. Five box hoppers and nine serial number cards. A booster box has two Argent rares. I think it's five, maybe seven super rares, and the rest are rares for like the rare spot. And you get eight foil commons in a box. You also get eight shard point cards that you can be used to turn in to get other awesome products from uh, Argent Saga. And there's also nine different serial number cards that are randomly inserted. N they are they are more rare than one per box. I don't know the exact ratio. It's not determined. Uh, but there's nine different serial number cards in the set that are individually numbered out of a thousand. So there's nine thousand in the pool that you can get. So depends on my boxes they plan to open to spread those out in to what the pull rate is. But my guess right now, there's 12 boxes in a case. I'm gonna say you get like six to eight serial stamp cards in a case, maybe. But I haven't opened any myself yet, so it's really hard to say. Uh, we saw one get opened in our pre-release. It was a serial stamped one of the uh, the Red Fire, the champion for that. So I saw one pulled in our pre-release. So they're out there. They're out there. 
And one of our staff members got a booster box today. They did not get a serial stamp card from their booster box. So hopefully our booster box that we get opened and posted here on the channel for Monday, hopefully. Hopefully I want to have a serial stamp card. We got, can show you guys all the different rarities then. I also found out today that they actually have some of the boxes, some of the packs, have a golden ticket inside of them that will grant you entry into a tournament in 2020 in which the winner will get a brand new car. It'll be a win a car tournament. So hopefully we can end up finding a golden ticket and perhaps I can enter that tournament as well or have someone from our staff enter it or something. Who knows? But yeah, depending on how things go, I uh, might end up opening up several boxes of that game and uh, offering singles and stuff as well. We'll see. Um, singles for that game should go live on TG Player overall um, on August 1st. That's the release date of the game. So, time will tell. Time will tell. But, let's just get these uncommons out of the way. Straighten up these stacks and uh, finish off this case, shall we? Box number six. And I think it's after 10 p.m. now. Not that you care, but currently it's Saturday. And it's about 10 p.m. local time, I, I think. I think I started this about 9. And I'm an hour and six minutes in, so... I can't really check my time on recording. So, I think it's about 10. I think it's about 10. And this will be our last box. Last something for glory. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We got one secret rare last box. We're at three secret rares, and we got one alternate art full art. So, hoping for another two secret rare box to make five. We should get at least one secret rare in this box. Hopefully it's one of those four biggins. Hopefully it's the Full Art Mew 3. I'm oh, sorry, the Rainbow Rare Mew 3. I've only gotten one Mew 3 in this case so far. So, I mean, we're, we're due for some Mew 3 goodness. Gotta say. Gotta say. King's Con Hollow. So, hopefully it's that or Secret Rare Trainer. Either Vereen Forest or Reset Stamp or Cherish Ball. I want to find one of those four cards. Nagandel GX. Oh, I didn't do a box recap last box. We got, I think, six hollows, unless Yuxi came from this box already. I think we got six. And ultra rares, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, a six and six box. First time we had equal number of ultras and hollows from this case. And the only box so far in which I've gotten this more hollows than ultra rares was the first box, the single box opening I did. Uh, over a week ago. So, again, I'll GX for that box. Alright. Oh, and if anybody is looking for codes from this set, uh, best suggestion would be to um, follow me and message me on Twitter at the Poke Capital. I think my like name on there, though, is Jeff of the Game Capital or something like that. Don't be confused, it's got the Game Capital logo, but it's still at the Poke Capital. Um, at the Game Capital would reach me as well, but that's like the store's face or the store's Twitter. I'm sure I'll get the message either way, but if you're looking for codes, they're for sale, not for free. I always get comments if people can have the codes for free, but we, we need to sell the stuff so we have the revenue so we can afford to keep opening things and you know. Keep the store open and all that stuff and pay our employees and all that kind of good stuff. Pay our taxes. All the fun. All the adulting. So, if you're looking to buy the codes, you can contact me via Twitter at the Poke Capital to arrange that. Um, might have cut a limited amount. So we usually go through like all of our initial codes like the first couple days. Uh, we actually already did not fulfill it yet because... I don't believe we're allowed to fulfill even code orders until Monday. Monday, because we're a previous store, we can sell all the product from this set starting then. Um, we've sold 300 of the codes in the set already. And we'll send those off on Monday via email. So, if you want codes as early, potentially as Monday or Tuesday in your inbox, hit me up ASAP and uh, work something out. Let me know how many you want. I can give you a quote. Prices change. Like they're always at their highest at release. If you want codes from this set a month or two from now, they'll probably be cheaper than they are this week. But 
naturally, you always want the newest and coolest thing as soon as possible. Just how we are wired as human beings. That's how we're wired, so... Yeah. <laughs> but it's still not too terrible. Still not too terrible. And, you know, trade values on stuff of this set will be at a high as well, so... I'd, if you want stuff from other sets too, it might not be a bad idea. Get some codes from this set to then trade those packs in game for the ultra rares you need. And we got another secret rare U turn board. So, not one of the ones we were hoping for, but still not bad. Not bad. I wouldn't call that like the top tier of the secret rares of this set, but it, it's mid, high mid tier, I'd say. U turn board should be a playable card. Should be a desired card. It's not a throwaway secret rare. Like, um, what was it? Beast Sprinter, I think it was called. We got so many of those right now that we keep getting from trains and stuff. It's. As far as secret rares goes, it's basically worthless. I mean, I think the going rates. It's not good. It's a cheap secret rare. Because it's just. It's just not played. It's. Collectors will want one for their collection, their sets, but. Nobody's looking for it for decks. It's just, just not a thing. So, U-turn board, definitely not in that category. So it's not like, oh no, not that one. But it, it's, not, it's not the best one, so, you know. Still hopefully we can find another one, because that's our fourth secret of the box, I think. So still need another secret to get to five. Because <laughs> we had three boxes in the case that had no secret rares, which is kind of gross. You don't tell us a hollow. Kinda gross, kinda gross. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Look at ton and a Lipard. All right, we're 11 12 of the way done. We have one half of one booster box left. The good times are almost over. And you guys will have to wait for the 12 case recap video. Reset stamp reverse, Hoopa Hollow. Every hollow you get though, one less chance of those blingy blingy fancy things. Now, I feel like in the overall long term, um, alternate art tag teams are easier to pull than one per case. But in my personal experience, it ends up being one per case. So I think for team up and on Broken Bonds, I think I got one alternate art full art in a case. And we're at one so far in this case. For Cycle Energy Reverse, I'm Brian and Darkrai GX. There's still time though. We could still get that alternate art slow duck. I would not mind that. But we've already got the best one, the choo choo, so. Hey, we got our fifth secret rare. Again, not the best ones, but hey, we'll take it. Keldeo GX. I think Mile GX is currently the determined worst GX to pull in the set. Especially as a rainbow rare. Uh, I'm not sure where Keldeo ranks. I haven't really looked at the regular GX values overall. I think Jirachi is the highest for the regular GX in the set. It's not like the Denny level from last set, but it's a serviceable GX. It's serviceable. Dratini. And it's the fact that so many decks are going to be using the, um, the Mew 3 that is weak to Psychic. Jirachi is probably going to end up in a lot of those decks, at least as a one of, so... People will be looking to get at least one of them for most decks, I think. I could be wrong, though. I'm not the competitive player I once was. I don't I don't have time to go to events because, you know, we're busy opening and sorting and selling all the cards and running the shop these days and the YouTubes and the Twitches, which even that I don't have the time for like I want to. So, you know, I just try to listen to Cody as much as I can and keep up with uh, what's good and what's relevant and what's trending that way. Not from first-hand experience, but yeah. Hello, Victini. Getting down there. This might be one of my faster case openings. Might be done out the door in under an hour 20. Oh, we did it! I have pulled, personally, the Slowpoke Insidek GX Altered Art. I will have to get some of those graded, too, because uh, I need all of these. I need all of them. I need all of them. Look at that Psyduck. Look at that Psyduck. That's adorable. Slowpoke and Psyduck GX alternate art. Now, that's what I have to go through and see what ones look the best to get graded, but yeah. Slowpoke, Psyduck, GX.
axe. Nice! So we got two Ultra Dark um, GXs in this case within the last two boxes. And we got five Secret Rares. I'll assume we don't get any Secret Rares or Ultra Dark Full Arts there. So I guess best case scenario at this point is we get a Full Art Mew 3. It's probably the best card we can hope to get. I hope we get all Mew 3 still, because we only have one Mew 3 in the case, which is not good. Which is not good. So I'm back in Guardians Rise and Tapu Lele was all the rage. Most cases would have three to four Tapu Leles. You'd usually get two, at least two regular arts, one full art, and if you're lucky, a rainbow rare, or a third regular art, so. Three was kind of normal. Four was lucky. Five was, woo, we hit the money pot. We hit the money pot. So, getting only one of the most desired cards of the set in a whole case would be a feels bad man. Yes, it's a bigger set than Guardians Rising. I understand, I understand, but we still want to get more than one. And hey, let's make it two. There's our second Mew 3. The third one I pulled overall, because like I said, spoiler alert, uh, we got one in our Build and Battle Box opening previously, uh, about a week ago on the channel. So there's our second one of the case. All right, four packs to go. Can we find the full art too? This would be the best box, I think. This could be the best box of the case if we can hit that uh, full art Mew 3. It still could be the best one. I don't know. Did we get both Choo Choo Arts last box? If so, that one's in the running for sure. But we got two secret rares in this box. I got an alternate art full art, so I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. It's possible. And and another tag team. Garchomp and Giratina GX. And we still got one last pack. The last pack. Last chance for glory of the entire booster case. Dun dun dun. Da 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 Four and two. And energy. And we've got fire energy. Bedoof. Cosmog. Magmar. Cottony. Snowrunt. Steeny. Channeler. Azelf. The reverse is a Cubone. And the rare, the final card of this booster case is... A Meg... Mortar, who is blasting you to smithereens. So that is all the opening. This last box had one, two, three, four, five hollows. And how many ultras? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ultra box. Now I, sh I showed, I think, each box like this. Let me know in the comments what box that was best. Box one, box two, three, four, five, six. I have to double check, but box six has to be in the running. With two secret rares, an ultra art tag team, the best tag team of the set, two additional tag teams, two more GXs. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do a, some a quick sort here just to see what the ratios were from this case. So, hollows, regular alt, regular, regular, rainbow, regular hollows. This should only take but a minute. I, I, again, I could pause, so... The Choo Choo's came inside our boxes to answer that question. To answer that question. That's just what I'm talking about now, but I, I'm out of topics. I am out of things to say. Believe it or not. We did not get a lot of full art trainers. I'm not sure how many are in the set offhand, but we didn't get a whole lot. Did not get a whole lot. All those regular arts, my goodness. And how? All right. So for our booster case, six boxes. I'll give all of a 12 case recap opening later today, hopefully, or at worst tomorrow. Hollow rares from six boxes. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. So that's exactly five hollows per box on average. And you get twelve white coats box on average, which means. If we got one white cup of three packs, we got seven ultra rares per box, which is what I believe is the norm now, for this set at least. So for the regular arts, I'm not gonna differentiate between tag teams. 
Regular arts, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Regular art GXs. So we almost got as many GXs, regular arts, as we did hollow rares. 28 to 30. So 28. We got... Dun, 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 dun. That's probably the math that I have here. It's hard to pick stuff up. Full arts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So one and a half full arts per box. And that puts us a 37 ultra rares total. And then we've got three rainbow rares and two secret rare trainers. So what was that? 28 and 9, 37 and 5, 42. So we got 42 ultra rares, 30 hollow rares. That is exactly seven ultra rares per box and five hollow rares per box. Exactly 12 white codes per box. So like I said at the onset there, it's easier to pull an ultra rare than it is to pull a hollow rare. That should be good news to basically everybody. Unless there's a hollow rare you really, really want to pull, then good luck to you. That'll conclude this booster case opening. And like I said, hopefully later today, I will have an opening, not an opening, a video for you guys, a 12 case opening recap. Nothing will be open to that, just me showing you all of the swag swag from 12 cases and giving you all the maths, the numbers, the stats of it for you guys. Uh, so you guys know more specifically what to expect if you're getting a box or case of your very own. And again, Art and Saga Booster Box will hopefully be on Monday. And then from there, we'll figure it out. But that does it for today. So please subscribe. Please rock smash that like button. Visit thegamecapital.com for every Pokemon card and other TCG needs. I thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time, whenever and wherever that may be. Including twitch.tv slash thegamecapital. See you later, everybody.